Hey everyone, I'm Richard and I've got a confession to make. I love budget PC hardware, just like the Pentium G4560 we're reviewing today. Now I get to review the latest and the greatest, the most powerful processors and graphics cards money can buy. But, well, for me, the budget stuff is just kind of more fun. So allow me to illustrate. This is Assassin's Creed Unity, an extremely demanding game, and here it is running on a GTX 1070 at 1080p. Average frame rate, 79.1 FPS. Now that's impressive stuff until we factor in Titan X Pascal, which effectively removes GPU as a limiting factor and pushes CPU power to the forefront. And there we are, the average benchmark rises to 133.5 FPS. Now the 1070 is an awesome card for Full HD gaming. Overkill really, but the fact is that the 6700K can actually run this game at least 69% faster. The reality is that most of the time a high-end CPU is highly under underutilized in most gaming scenarios. So do we really need that much CPU power? Well I'd say that there are scenarios where we do but there are a multitude more scenarios where well you don't really. Some people just want the highest performance possible from the lowest amount of cash and that's why the new Pentium G4560 is such an awesome processor. It's a dual core CPU with four threads effectively making it a junior i3 if you like. Now up until the release of the new KB Lake line Pentiums have been massively cut down, hyperthreading is disabled, AVX instructions are removed and sometimes even memory bandwidth is hobbled. The end result is a hell of a lot of stutter in multi-threaded games. A lot of the enthusiast press got really excited about the overclockable Pentium G3258 but as you can see here in our CPU stress tests the stutter is unbelievable, it's just not good enough. Of course, pairing the Pentium with a less capable graphics card helps, but hey, I've even made the G3258 stutter with a card as lowly as a GTX 750 Ti. But this new G4560 is different. Frequency is locked to a modest 3.5 gigahertz, but you do get hyperthreading and memory bandwidth isn't hobbled. Pair this Pentium with a new B250 motherboard like the MSI B250M Mortar here, and you can run faster 2400 MHz DDR4. Now on Skylake the limit was 2133 megahertz, and this leads to some interesting comparisons. So here's Rise of the Tomb Raider's CPU busting geothermal valley. The Skylake i3 can only run with 2133 MHz RAM on budget boards but it is faster than the Pentium at 3.7 GHz. However with KB Lake we can up RAM speed to 2400 MHz and this opens up more processor performance. So in effect we've eliminated the i3's frequency advantage by compensating with more memory bandwidth. And it's not an outlier either. We see the same thing here with Assassin's Creed Unity. And it's pretty much the same again with Far Cry Primal. The Pentium is matching the i3. Oh yeah, and The Witcher 3. Again, very, very similar results. And the cool thing is that 2400 MHz RAM isn't really that much pricier than bargain basement DDR4 these days. So it shouldn't have too much of an impact on the cost of a budget build. But the point is this, last year we called the Core i3 6100 the best budget CPU money could buy and now we get nigh on identical performance for a lot less money. There's just nothing else that gets close to this kind of value. But hey, let's look at some classic budget processors to see how they stack up. So AMD has a couple of interesting cheapo chips that are either a little cheaper or much the same price as the Pentium, the 4-core Athlon X4 860K and the classic 6-core FX6300. Now, in the multi-threaded game engine era, the promise of the FX6300 has finally been realized. So Rise of the Tomb Raider running here under DX12 is still maxing the CPU, but the Pentium is only 13% faster than the AMD offering. But its performance lead rises to 51% compared to the Athlon. The Witcher 3 in our test sequence here, the Pentium Pentium has only a 9% advantage over the FX6300, but it rises to 56% over the Athlon. And yeah, of course, you can overclock both of those AMD chips, but then you need to factor in pricier cooling solutions. However, for titles that thrive on single thread performance, Intel wins out with dramatic leads. Here in Far Cry Prime or the Pentium, 25% faster than the FX6300, rising to 37% over the Athlon. And some engines show much more stutter on AMD. AMD chips than they do on Intel. So here, Ashes of the Singularity CPU benchmark struggles in some areas on the FX6300 while the Athlon can have multi-second pauses. I mean, this is not good. 
Intel is so dominant now in the CPU market that games naturally seem to gravitate to their capabilities. But you know, AMD has new processors coming along and the FX6300 here is like four, five years old. The fact that it's still competitive in 2017 is absolutely remarkable. But buying an AMD platform right now severely limits your upgrade options. And it's really not a good idea with Ryzen just around the corner. Go for Intel in the here and now, on the other hand, and there's bags of headroom left for upgrading. So let's look at the Witcher 3 again. Keep the same 2400 MHz memory, the same board, an upgrade from the Pentium to the i7 7700K. Now, you won't be able to overclock it on a B250 board, but the fact is that it's so highly clocked out of the box, we've doubled performance. And hey, even upgrading to an i5 offers a big improvement. Now this is theoretical performance of course, but the fact is that the upgrade headroom is indeed there if you want to tap into it further down the road. So the real question is just what kind of gaming experience can you get with a cheapo Pentium and crucially, what's the best GPU to pair with it? Okay, hold on to your hats here. Initial results are pretty awesome. The Pentium works just fine powering a GPU as powerful as the GTX 1060. I mean, here's Doom running at 1080p, at ultra settings under Vulkan. Doesn't miss a beat, and in this respect, the experience is every bit as good as running an i5 or an i7 with the same GPU. Star Wars Battlefront, again, 1080p 60, locked even in huge multiplayer games. CPU isn't being maxed here, but moving over to a 64-player Battlefield 1 game, the Pentium is definitely being pushed to its limits, resulting in some minor frame rate drops. But the bottom line here is that our budget CPU is still powering the GTX 1060 effectively, even in titles that have a reputation for requiring a lot of CPU power. So what about AMD's RX 480 equivalent? Well, on DX12 and Vulkan, you're sound, but AMD's DX11 driver just isn't fast enough. So to illustrate, here's our Call of Duty Infinite Warfare GPU test we did where we pitted the GTX 1060 against the RX 480 and we paired both GPUs with an i7. Yeah, there's no doubt about it, the RX 480 is faster, but look what happens when we run similar tests with the GPUs paired with a Pentium. In less complex areas, the 480 is still faster, but as soon as any action kicks off, GTX 1060 holds its performance level while the RX 480 drops down significantly. Basically, the higher the frame rate, the more the the CPU becomes involved and paired with an AMD GPU on DX11 titles, not all of them I should stress, the more likely you are to hit CPU limits. Put simply, the Radeon driver just isn't fast enough to drive an RX 480 with a dual core chip. And that's a bit of a shame because the RX 470 is often on sale and represents great value. It's just that you need a quad core processor to run it effectively. Nvidia's driver is faster and indeed multi-threaded, providing better performance on less capable budget CPUs. And in the case of Infinite Warfare here, it stays above 60 FPS at all times in our test clips, while the RX 480 can drop to the mid 40s, something that simply wouldn't happen if the GPU was paired with a more capable chip. But yeah, as I said, I don't think DX12 or Vulkan will be an issue for AMD cards here. I mean, once again, here's Doom 2016, 1080p, 60 FPS, ultra settings. That performance is locked and it is awesome. So I have a rule of thumb when it comes to budget CPUs. If the console versions of the same games run at 60 FPS, you should have no problems doing the same with the Pentium but 30 FPS console titles? Yeah, you've got to be smarter. Now, sometimes there are some pleasant surprises. This is The Witcher 3 running at high settings with GTX 1060. And by and large, I'm running this game with the Pentium at 60 frames per second. But drops do kick in with complex areas like Novigrad City here. Regardless, it's still a pretty great result for a very cheap CPU, but some games do require a lot of processing power. Now here's Hitman's Paris stage. Despite tweaking settings, I'm still getting noticeable drops under 60 frames per second, something that just wouldn't be a problem with an i5. Crisis 3's jungle stage can easily be run at 1080p 60 with a GTX 1060, but only if you've got an i7 processor. The i5 drops frames, the i3 drops more, and the picture with the Pentium just isn't pretty at all. Now, in these scenarios, you've got to mitigate your losses if you like and divert GPU power elsewhere. 
So for example, with Crisis 3, you can use Nvidia Inspector or half-rate adaptive V-Sync in the control panel to lock the game at 30 frames per second and use the 1060's GPU power to run at 1440p on very high settings. Or else drop down to high, drop shading and shadows to medium, and the 1060 is pretty good for 4K at 30 frames per second. But the bottom line is that while I've had some great results with the GTX 1060, it really is too powerful and too expensive to pair with a cheapo Pentium. But you know what? There are so many used GTX 970s on the second-hand market now that prices are kind of dropping like a stone. The 970 is slower than a 1060, obviously, but in actual fact, that works to its advantage, so it's a little more balanced with a less capable CPU like the Pentium. But if you need extra power, then obviously the 970 overclocks like a demon if you want to push graphics harder. So yeah, what I've tried to illustrate here is that owning and gaming with a budget rig does pose challenges, and that's something you don't often see in benchmarks. I mean, check out this Pentium versus i3 versus i5 versus i7 comparison benchmark. You look at the percentage differentials here in terms of performance, and those more expensive chips really don't look like great value. But in the real world, gaming with the Pentium G4560, a bit of a double-edged sword. On the one hand, the performance you get from it is staggeringly good, bearing in mind the paltry amount of money you pay for it. I mean, the i7 77 700K is twice as fast, but it costs five times as much. In terms of FPS for the money, if you like, the Pentium is untouchable. But then on the flip side, there's the fact that PC gaming at 60 FPS is so, so good. It's what sets the experience apart from the consoles. 30 FPS can work just fine, but if you want that gold standard in gaming, if you want ultra smooth action, well, yeah, no doubt about it, I think you should have a quad-core processor instead. So there we go, budget PC gaming is awesome, but you've got to know your limitations. And on that bombshell, I think I'll leave things right there. Do like and subscribe to support Digital Foundry, and I'll catch you next time.